Are you getting excited for spring? I know I sure am. And especially after yesterday when we had a small blizzard blow right through our area here in Delaware. It was cold, it was chilly, it was snowy, and I sat by the fire eating a bowl of chili because it was cold. And those kind of days, especially in March and sometimes in April, really give me an itch for spring. So I came up with a really fun project to share with you, and I'm excited to show it to you. Hi, my name is Cindy. I'm with Reinvented Delaware, and we love to reinvent and repurpose all sorts of home decor and furniture. And sometimes we like to take unexpected items and turn them into something completely new, like the project that I'm going to share with you today. It's these adorable pine cone flower stems. We're gonna make a whole bunch of them to make a bouquet. We're gonna have all different colors. I'm excited to show you how to do this. Let's get started. The first thing that you're going to need, of course, are some pine cones. These pine cones are from my yard. I picked a whole bunch, I don't even know how many, literally a whole box full of these pine cones. They were already opened. They sat in a box for a year in my garage, so I don't have to worry about any bugs. You're also going to need some paint. I'm using Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Paint, and I have several colors here too. I have a farmhouse white, an arabesque. I have several colors in blues. I have a nice poppy color. You'll also need Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Mix Easy. That just helps the powder dry milk paint to mix up. You'll need glue sticks. You'll need a pair of floral snippers like these, some flexible wire. I got this whole spool on Amazon. I'll link it below. You'll need a cup of water, a measuring teaspoon that is only for milk paint. You'll need some E6000 or Gorilla Glue like I have here. A glue gun, of course. You're going to need that. You'll also need some of these brown stem covered wire pieces. I'm going to link them below. I don't exactly know the name of them. I found mine at Walmart, but I'll put an Amazon link down below. And you're going to need an ice cube tray to mix the colors of milk paint. I've already got mine started mixing and we'll talk about that more here in a few minutes. I like to use a cheap ice cube tray to mix the paints, especially when I only need a small amount like I need for these little pine cone flower stems that we're going to make into a bouquet. Mixing the paint is a one-to-one -one ratio. That means whatever amount of water that you use, use one of those to one scoop of the powder. I'm only going to use a very small amount of paint, so I've mixed up one teaspoon Spoon of water, tepid, lukewarm water, not hot, not cold, to one teaspoon of the milk paint powder. I put the water in the ice cube trays and then I scooped each color, one scoop each, into the paint. And it's been sitting here for a few minutes while I got my all of my camera gear set up. Let me show you how to mix it. It's as simple as this. You can see here with the dried lavender color that it's not completely mixed up yet. You just stir it around. It's that simple. Because it's been sitting like that for about 10 minutes, it stirs up and mixes is very, very easily. You can see that. I'm going to rinse off my fork and I have this designated fork for mixing paint. I wouldn't use this in the kitchen. And I'll go to the next color. If I have any trouble mixing it up, I can simply take this little product. Let me grab it and show it to you. It's called Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Mix Easy. It only takes about a drop in a little container like this. If you mixed a bigger container, you might need two or three drops, but you won't need much. Just one little drop. And this stuff is amazing. Just helps you to stir the paint. It has a a special compound of sorts in there that helps the paint mix to uh, completely be soaked up into the water and mixed nicely. I'll do the same with the other, other colors that I have. So some of these little areas are, are kind of tight in there. So you're going to have to really push that paintbrush down into that little pine cone petal to get the paint in there. That's why the paintbrush gets a little messed up. Here's another one. I hope you can see that way down in there. Let's get the paint in there like that. Don't worry about the brush because you're probably not going to keep it going to use it for this project and then toss it. They're so inexpensive. And again, I'm reaching way down in there like that. 
Okay, both sides of this little flower, look at that, doesn't it look like a little flower? It's so cute. Both sides of this flower are going to show on the stem. So I'm also going to paint the back side of the pine cone. Don't worry about getting it on your fingers. It's just inevitable. You're gonna make a mess. You're gonna have fun doing it. I also wanna point out here, see the white bits? That is the sap on this particular pine tree. It turns white after it's been on there for a while. I'm not sure why. All right, so all the flowers are painted and now it's a time to attach them to our stem. For the stem, I'm using these, it's like a paper covered wire. I, I don't know what the name is it, of it is. I found it at my local Walmart and I'm going to try to link it down below so you can see it there, but it's a pretty stiff wire and we want that because these flowers have some heft to them. So we wanna have something nice and sturdy. The ones I have, well actually it says it's 18 gauge wire and I'm not sure how long these are. It doesn't say, let's see on the back here. It doesn't say how long they are, but I figured they were a little long. So I decided to cut them in half. You can see how long these are. And half would be plenty long enough for the stem. That's how long this one is. That's half of it. You can see I also bent it and such. We'll get to that. So to start off, I'm just going to use some wire cutters, heavy duty wire cutters, 18 gauge is pretty strong, and I'm just going to cut them in half. So I can already use this one here as my, uh, my little guide of measuring. The other wire that I'm using comes on this spool, and you can see it's pretty messy. Uh, it's very flexible wire, and that's really important for the next step that we're getting ready to do. I will link this down below in the description. All right, so the first step is to pick one stem and three blooms. I wanna put you know, two, two to three blooms on each one. I think I'm gonna go ahead and um, pick three in the arabesque color that I painted. It's this dusty pink color. And in nature, flowers are all different sizes, and that's why all these pine cones at different sizes are perfect. Usually the one at the top would be small, and then the ones to work, that work their way down, they kind of get larger because this, the one on the top would have been the new growth. So what I'm going to do with this brown wire is kind of lace it back here in between the petals of my pine cone flower. I have it strung through there a little bit. You can see that I have it. It's, it's on the back side going through uh, the, there you go, you can see that, going through the back side and I've threaded it through quite a bit to give myself plenty. And then I can take that wire and kind of bend it around the leaves so that I know that wire has a secure hold on that pine cone flower. All right, and then I'm going to give it a little twist. That's my dog in the background you hear, Barkley. He likes to bark, doesn't he? So I'm gonna give that a little twist like that. Okay, so now it's time to attach the flowers to the stem. We rem remember, we cut all these pieces in half. The idea now is to use this thinner wire that we have and three of the blooms and attach them to this 18 gauge paper covered wire. Then what I'm going to do is get, wrangle some of this wire. It's a little bit of a mess, but we really need this wire because it's so flexible and it's also super thin. So I know I'll be able to attach these blooms um, from, actually I'm gonna use this one, by running this wire on the back side of the pieces. So remember we have all these layers of petals. The idea with this wire is to get it to go through those layers so that it can grab hold of the actual pine cone flower. So I'm gonna leave a, enough of a tail here and I'm going to run this wire underneath and into the layers of these pine cone petals. 
You want to go in and get nice and snug. You want to try not to break them. But if you do, it's okay because flowers are not all perfect in nature. So I've wrapped it all the way around. It's because it's brown, it's nice and hidden. And you can see I have this tail and I've matched it up. And now I'm going to twist those two together to secure that pine cone flower to this piece of wire. All right, so we have that first pine cone on there. That's looking really good. The next step is to take the heavy gauge wire. This is 18 gauge, so it's stiff. We're going to make it look more natural soon, but first let's get the blooms on. So I'm going to take the pine cone flower that I just wrapped, and I'm going to just at the top get it started to holding on to the heavier gauge wire that I have acting as the stem. So we're going to scoot that down. The goal is to have this bloom, this pine cone flower, on the very tip of the 18 gauge wire. So I want to make sure I leave myself enough room for that. We're going to have to glue that on. And I've wrapped the brown wire around the heavier 18 gauge wire stem to the next place that I want to add a bloom, which is going to be about right here. See what I mean about this brown wire? It is, it's a little crazy. Kind of like having a crazy hair that won't stay in, the, in place. So the next one, I'm going to take this one and I'm going to wrap some of the wire the same way. I'm going to tuck it into the petals of the back side of the wire like that. One or two, try to get myself into several of them so I know I've got a nice secure grip and then I'm going to take the wire and tighten it up. And I wanna have the flower upward. I don't wanna have the flower pointing downward. Oh, I just lost a petal, that's okay. We can use a piece of hot glue, a little dollop of hot glue to glue that back on. So I've got this going upward and you're gonna see this one petal here is pretty loose. I'll take care of that with some hot glue as well. But I've got it secured on there with the wire and now I'm just going to wrap the wire around down to the next place where I want the next flower. And we'll go down about there. And notice that the flower is going upwards. This is the top of the um, stem of flowers. So I want that flower going upward. I don't want it pointing downward. Let's add the next flower. I've got this one kind of going on that side. So let's try to make this one kind of going over to this side. So I've got the wire. And again, I'm going to take the back side of the pine cone and I'm going to get that wire in behind, intertwined. I don't know the word to use there, but kind of intertwined with the petals of the pine cone flower. And you can see here what I've done. I've gone around most all of those little pine cone petals and I've wrapped back around to where I started it to begin with. And then I'm going to wrap that around the stem, making sure that this is kind of going upwards. This was pointing downwards again. I'll have to make sure that that stays upwards. And I'm going to wrap that around our flower stem all the way down to the bottom. All right, we're gonna go ahead and glue, um, let's glue this petal back on that fell. You can tell right where it fell off as I missed the paint there on that side. Just a little dollop of glue in there. And I'm going to lay the petal on top so hopefully the glue won't show. I'm trying not to, I don't want that glue to show if I can avoid it. You'll never know it was missing, hopefully. And let's let that dry completely. The next step is I'm going to add a dollop of glue right here. I want that bloom right on top of the, of the stem because that's where it would naturally be and I want it to be right there. All right, remember on this second one, some of the uh, leaves, some of the little petals on the pine cone flower were kind of loose. Let me move these out of the way. By the way, look how pretty these are. Oh my goodness, that wire. Look how pretty these are turning out. Aren't they so pretty? Up here on this one, the, some of the uh, petals were falling off. So I'm going to go ahead and glue those on first. Just doing a little repair work here. 
the pine cones are pretty dry, so you have to bear that in mind. I think I'm going to also add a little dollop of glue just in there because this little flower was a little bit weak. So I'll just add a little bit of glue in there to hold it and then we can move down to this one. This one's on here pretty tight but I just have to get it angled correctly. There we go. And there's that one. Look at that. Once all the glue is dry we are going to go back and bend the stem to make them look more natural. So all of the flowers are glued and um, wired onto each of the stems. They're looking really good. I have a whole stack of them off to the side here. And I wanted to show you about bending the stems to make them look a little more realistic. You can see this one is just straight. I have not bent it. This one has a little bit of curve to it. Now this is kind of willy-nilly and you have to be careful that you don't damage the pine cone flowers but I just don't want it stiff like this. So you just want to add, kind of like when you get faux flowers at the store. They always come straight as a board and you need to make a couple of little bends in it to make them kind of realistic. I've bent mine sort of where the blooms are coming off of. I don't know if that's natural or not, but it looks better than it did um, absolutely straight. So I'm going to go through and bend all of the stems I wanted to show you on this last one, remember that when I was painting one of the flowers, it broke in half and I said to hold it, to save it. And what I did was I, I wrapped what I could, both two different sections, and then I added a little bit of glue and it, it's staying on there just fine. So that, don't worry if you break one of the uh, flower, pine cone flowers while you are painting them. All right, now let's add the leaves. I'm gonna gather up my leaves here, my little pine cone leaf bits and they're going to be glued on. Each one looks like just one little leaf. And a lot of times that's what all the flowers have. They have just one little leaf on the stem. So I'm going to think of a couple of areas where I think it would look good, like right there. I think that would look good. And I'm just going to put a little dollop of glue on the end of the stem. I mean, I'm sorry, the um, leaf, the little leaf. Words are hard for me today, most days. Most days words are hard for me really. And I'm just going to glue that on there without burning my finger. All right, I've got all of the leaves glued on. I put about two leaves on each of my flower stems and I had plenty to go around. I've bent them all so they have a different uh, natural bend to them, not just straight. And now it's time to make a little arrangement. And here's my disclaimer. I am not a floral arranger. I like a real loose and free kind of form. So that's what I'm going to do. I found my one of my ironstone pitchers. I love these pitchers so much. They, this one has a lot of uh, crazing and crackling and discoloration. I cut a piece of styrofoam to fit in the bottom. That way I have a place to stick the wire 
uh, flower stems in. Then I have a little chunk of this moss that you get. I got a bag of it at Walmart just to cover the styrofoam. And I'm going to just place these flowers in here and I might have to do some more bending as I go along. We'll see how it goes. Like I said, I'm not the best at flower arranging, but I'm going to give this a go. 